Okay, so I got you on a tripod. I got you zoomed in to the number four cylinder intake. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to rotate the crank and I got my assistant out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on one cylinder head at a time and we're going to rotate the crank and then we're going to verify that all eight of our valves open and then close at some point in that rotation and make sure that nothing's binding and then we'll move on and stare at the next cylinder head but I'm gonna get you a shot of kind of what I'm talking about here and then I'll I'll bring you back and when we're completely done ready so if you want to just stare at you know all these valves coming across here we'll just see what we got okay so we got this one opening Okay, I see this one open. I've seen this one open. What about on the bottom? Oh, this one and that one opened. Okay, that one's opening. That one's now starting to move. I've seen them all move and open. Okay. So that one's going up. I see that one again. So you've seen all of these exhaust yes. ones. Now, did they go down an equal amount and then come back up? Because we just want to make sure you don't see one go down real quick and then come back up because that would mean it's no. not opening all the way. So they did. They opened all yes. the way. Okay. Yep. There goes that one. There goes that one. And this crank is nice and easy to turn. It's not binding. You, you may hear a little bit of a scraping sound on the video. And what that is is because the cylinders have been machined and there's a new set of piston rings. You, you, until everything wears in, you get that nice <laughs> scraping sound. The other thing is, I'm hearing this thing, you know, pull in air. I've heard that, yeah. Which is good because that means we've got, you know, decent seal. Okay, so we've seen everyone on that one move. So you kind of get the idea of what we're looking at. You've seen some of the valves actuate. I've got you zoomed in on one. I'm going to cut the camera at this point. We're going to watch the other cylinder head, and I'm going to rotate this a few more times, and then I'll, I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And hey, welcome back. So we got our permanent bolt in place. We got it torqued to, looks like they call for 63 foot-pounds. And we did put a little bit of blue Loctite on that bolt, again, just for, you know, the extra insurance. Let's see, now that we've got that done, what we can do, I need to mark that with a, with a silver Sharpie before I forget, so that way we know. That that is done. Okay, so we've got everything buttoned up tested torqued on the front of this so now we can clean up the front and work on getting our new i should say not our new but work on getting our timing cover in uh, which we did purchase a new timing cover gasket which that is not the timing cover gasket the timing cover gasket is in a big there it is right there so in case you missed it on the previous video, come on, display, wake up, there we go. I'm trying to get the display on the camera to wake up. So there's the part number for the timing cover gasket. We'll go ahead and get that changed out before we put that one on. Uh, but first, like we spoke about, I just need to clean this surface up uh, and get this, thing, uh, get this thing prepped. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and I'll bring you back, thank you much. And welcome back. So you can see that we've got our timing cover in place, which there's five bolts on this particular setup that are timing cover only bolts. And by that I mean there are others, but they pass through the water pump first. So you've got the two down here in the corners. You got two right here where the AC compressor would bolt, and you got the one here, which go actually bolts into the driver's side cylinder head. Now remember, this one's got an S marked on it. If you remember when we disassembled it, because this boulder, this bolt has a shoulder on it. 
because of that spacer that you see there. So just be mindful that that one's a little bit different. The other four, the exact same, the exact same size. And uh, of course, we're keeping up with all our hardware and going back for our hardware from our tag and bag method. So extremely helpful. This video is uh, getting a little bit long at this point. So I think I'm going to cut it at this one. And this will be the end of part three. And we will pick up part four with uh, getting our engine rotated over uh, and go ahead and put in the windage tray, oil pickup tube, and oil pan in place. Uh, and we'll then, we'll then, then we'll go on from there because as you can see, we still need to put the water pump on. We need to get our sensors replaced. This is the old cam sensor. We're going to put a new one on as well as a new crank. Pretty much all the sensors on this engine are getting changed out with new OEM sensors. So oil pump, oil temperature, water temperature, you, you name it. Uh, so with that being said, if you've held on and watched my rambling this long and you haven't subscribed, please consider to do so. Uh, it would greatly help out the channel. Uh, the, more subscriber, the more subscribers that we can get on this channel, the more we get noticed. The more we get noticed, the more YouTube recommends us. And that also gives us potential for more subscribers, which gets us you know, noticed more. And it's kind of a self, uh, self-serving feedback loop, if you want to call it that. But if you haven't subscribed, please consider to do so. And I will let you go. And this will be the end of part three. And I will bring you back for the beginning, beginning of part four. And like I said, we'll pick things up with, um, go ahead and uh, now that I think about it, let's, well, I'll tell you what, I'm rambling. Well, I'll bring you back on, on uh, part four and then I'll, I'll kind of discuss things from there. And with that being said, I thank you much and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. So this should be part four-ish uh, of our long block build. And the last part we left off on, we went ahead and got our timing cover installed with our five timing cover bolts that secure it. And again, the rest of the bolts come in through the water pump. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to take a little bit of time, run some brake clean over this mounting surface for this pump. Uh, the pump, we did get a, again, a new gasket for the water pump as well. And uh, let's see, let's get you a part number. There we go. That's the part number for it. So we're going to do that next. We're going to go ahead and get that on there so that way it'll secure the rest of the timing cover uh, before we flip it over and start putting the, the oil pan and everything on. So let me go do that. Let me go grab the oil pump, oil, oil and oil pump bolts, and then we'll get to work on this, and I'll bring you back one moment. And welcome back. So you can see that we've got our water pump loosely attached at this point. And remember when we removed it, we made this little template here. And I got this trick from uh, from Scott Rods. So thank you, Scott Rods, once again, uh, for me using one of your... Actually, I've used many of your tips, but this is just one of them. Uh, the So we use a little piece of cardboard here just to mark... Um, what bolts were in what locations because a lot of these bolts for this water pump are different sizes now all data uh, gives you the torque spec for it this is just clean mating surface install water pump tighten bolts to 18 foot pounds and they kind of have some numbers as to what's what but it don't really give you a torquing sequence but this water pump on a 5.7 has the exact same number of bolts as this water pump on a 6.4 so what I'm going to use is the number diagram off the 6.4 as kind of a, a, a torquing sequence in order to get this thing uh, tightened up. And we'll be going to 18 foot-pounds uh, on these uh, per the documentation for the 09. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get to work on this. Uh, like I said, you're not a lot of the stuff I'm cutting out is because it's, it's covered in other videos in case you're wondering. And you're not missing much by me tightening tighten a couple bolts up and, and, and getting out a torque wrench to verify torque. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, and get this water pump torqued on and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. 
and welcome back. So we went ahead, you can see we got our water pump in, torqued up, switched to a little bit different color Sharpie, switched to a black Sharpie just so it was easier to see on silver bolts rather than silver on silver. But we got everything torqued up. We also went ahead and replaced the thermostat, and you may be asking yourself the question why, as the last time we did this and we put this water pump on, we also replaced the thermostat. And the reason is, and I'll give you that part number, this is a, an OEM thermostat for this 2009 Hemi. And uh, when we ran it the last time, although the thermostat opened, it seemed like it took a little bit of a delay, like the temperature got up a little bit higher than I would have liked. Almost like the, the thermostat itself was just kind of, you know, slow opening or, or lazy opening, maybe you wanna, however you want to call it. But again, just to be on the safe side, we wanted, because this is an aftermarket one, we went ahead and just pulled it and put an OEM one in there uh, to see kind of how it will perform. Now we still have a we still have a new temperature sensor to put in. I'm going to hold off on that one as well as this. So we'll be we'll be replacing pretty much all the sensors at the same time. So we have a temp sensor here, cam sensor here to replace yet, uh, and then we'll have an oil pressure and oil temperature as well as the crank. A sensor on the other side of the block so we'll, we'll make a we'll make an event of it we'll go around and do all of our sensors at the same time that way we know we got them done now the vvt solenoid even though we deleting the mds the vvt solenoid still has to be here uh and about unfortunately though the way the the particular engine hoist i have mounts or the engine block adapter mounts this can't the solenoid can't be here so it'll be one of the things that we'll have to do prior to installing the intake but after this is already inside the vehicle so with that being said we've got everything torqued down here we're going to go ahead and spin this over so we can get to the underside and start working on getting the oil pan and windage tray pickup tube and and so on and so forth in place let me get this thing rotated over and go collect some more parts and i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back uh, so you can see that we've got our block turned over for us at this point. We've got our surface uh, prepped at this point with a little bit of brake clean, just to re remove any residual oil and grime and things of that nature, as, as we have with every ceiling surface that we've attached to this block so far. Uh, now, the oil pan gasket and the windage tray are one unit, and this is the uh, replacement one that you see down there. So this one will be going on. We got our oil pickup tube ready. We put a new O-ring on our pickup tube that will mate into our uh, oil pump. You definitely want to make sure that that ring is not flat and that when it does seat into that uh, oil pump, that there's no issues with it because if that seal gets compromised, you're not going to have oil pressure or you'll have less than normal oil pressure. But that's the part number for the windage tray slash oil pan gasket. So we've got that on the ready, we've got that on the ready, and we've got our RTV ready. There are four spots on here that I was talking about earlier that have to have a bead of RTV, and that's this spot here and this spot here on the front timing cover where it meets the block, just because it, it could potentially be an uneven surface. And back here where our rear main seal went in, where it meets the block. So these two points here, got to get a bead of RTV, and these two points here. Now, the windage tray has to kind of go on first before you can put the oil pump in place. So, it's kind of, again, it's kind of a little bit of a puzzle act in the sense that you've got to set the windage tray kind of in place uh, on top of the RTV, but then immediately work on getting the oil pickup tube remounted and then finally, once that's in place, we can put the oil pan on. So just got to be careful not to smear this RTV too much or kind of push it that much out of position. But I'm going to get some beads of RTV on here and uh, get this all installed. And when I have the windage tray and the oil pickup tube in, I'll, I'll bring it back. But I'm going to put a little bit of uh, mortar oil around that O-ring just to make sure that it seats into this pump uh, without an issue. Uh, with that being said, let me go ahead and start working on this, and I'll bring you back. Thank you much. 
and we'll come back so you can see that we got our rtv in place we lightly set our windage tray down in place and went ahead and hooked up our pickup tube again just making sure that that o-ring seated all the way around and didn't mush out of the side tightened our secure bolt there and tightened our bolt here so no other pickup tube in place i'm gonna do one quick wipe out another wipe out of the oil pan we already wiped out all the residual oil from before but it's got a little bit in there from when that pickup tube was sitting in it so we're gonna do one more cleanup on this and then we're gonna set our oil pan in place and start getting that one tightened up and now uh, i'll bring you back take a look and welcome back so you can see we got our oil pan on i did follow the sequence as far as tightening but i didn't use a torque wrench on this you don't have to go full bore uh, with these oil pan bolts um, there's another individual another youtuber uh reignited and he covers this as well just you know snug them down good so what i did was i did two passes following the torque sequence got them down to where they were nice and snug you know a little over hand tight and then went through them one more time and it's the same way i did the last oil pan we put on here as well as the one on the uh, the 2500 because you know cranking these things down to the foot pounds they say to do in the in the manual kind of it, it bothers me because those bolts aren't very big and it's it doesn't take very much to break them so you can yes you're kind of asking probably what's going on here i noticed that while putting the pan on that there were a couple of areas that got scraped uh, by the look of it when the engine was removed from the truck and those areas started to show a little bit of rust so i just hit them with some scotch bright to clean it up and then shot it with some engine enamel why blue you ask is because it's what i had uh because again i just trying to protect this oil pan and you know make it last many 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 years so we have it it's accessible easy to get to polish again po again like i said scrub out the rust with some scotch bright rough up the surface a little bit and just hit it with some engine enamel i may come back and do one more coat because i see a little bit of the valley sitting right there still so i'll give that about uh, 10 15 minutes to set up and then I'll, I'll hit it again and then we'll let it dry but other than that you can see that we've got our um our old, uh, the lower part of what we need done done now since we have the since we have access to this uh nice engine stand that can rotate this block for us i think what i'm going to do next since it's easy to get to them is I'll, I'll tilt the block up a little bit so it's up a little bit higher and then we'll go ahead and get the exhaust manifolds um, onto our cylinder heads uh, and then we'll go from there so let me go ahead and start getting some uh, some gaskets out and I think we're gonna go with the Fel Pro exhaust gaskets like we did last time yeah these were fine so there's the part number for the exhaust manifold gaskets I'm gonna go there's the exhaust manifolds themselves. So I'm going to go scrounge down some uh, hardware. It looks like the hardware may be sitting next to it. And uh, go ahead and prep to start putting those on. Again, I'll just clean the surface up with a little bit of brake clean. You know, they look relatively clean. There's no crud or anything on them, obviously, because as much as they've been handled and clean, they're, they're in pretty decent shape. With that being said, uh, let me get uh, prepped to do that, and I'll bring you back. Thank you much and welcome back you can see we got our exhaust manifold with heat shield uh, reinstalled onto our uh, driver's side and in case you're curious uh, i've got it upside down because that's the direction we're, we're facing right now let me turn that right side up for you that's your torque sequence for your left side again 18 foot pounds and then for the passenger side that's your torque sequence there yeah 18 foot pounds let's see here okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to go just kind of i also wanted to show you this at the being able to rotate this at a at an angle and have this hold it there is amazingly uh convenient because i guess like you see here we're able to raise this up to working height to put this exhaust manifold on so so far this engine stand is working great uh i'm going to do the same thing the other side just kind of tilt it to where it needs to be and put its uh its exhaust manifold on and then i'll bring you back one moment 
And welcome back. So you can see we got both our exhaust manifolds on at, one, at this point. And yes, we were able to do the same thing over here. And just, I'll show you, to be able to just partially rotate it. And it'll hold its place there. It was phenomenal, in my opinion, to be able to work on this. So I'm just going to rotate this back around yeah and it's got a little bit of a lean to it as you can see because it's got all the weight on it now but it's it's handling it uh without an issue i mean and that is quite a bit of weight with the cylinder heads and exhaust manifolds and everything on it uh i'm going to hit this up with one more one more shot of paint and then let it dry and then we'll flip it uh actually yeah yeah we'll hit it with a little bit of paint we'll flip it back over and then we can start to work on getting uh, all of our sensors replaced. Again, we've got the crank sensor, uh, which is going to go here because it's on the. This is the driver side. Uh, then we got the oil pressure temperature sensor, and then the oil pressure sensor, and then we've got a water temperature sensor, and then the cam sensor. So we got a, a pile full of sensors that we'll we'll come back and do here in a bit and uh the flex plate and such obviously we can't do that because it's on the engine stand we'll have to do that once it's on the cherry picker and we've got access to what we need here to put our flex plate on but there you go it's starting to look more and more and more like a complete motor but uh, like i said i'm gonna hit that little bit of paint give that some time to dry and then i'll bring you back thank you much oh one thing i wanted to point out if you didn't notice it on the last one, I may mention this in a previous video, but just to let you know, you see the passenger side has eight bolts in the exhaust manifold. The driver's side actually has nine. So there's one more on the driver's side. So just make a quick note of that one. Yes, and uh, use a little bit of anti-seize just on the threads of these little uh, studs before putting the uh, the nuts on that secure the heat shields just in case you know somebody has to take those off again yeah just trying to be nice to the to the next individual who may need to work on this but uh i'll let you go and i'll bring you back thank you much and welcome back so we're just prepping to go ahead and start putting our new sensors on and this is your cam sensor just a single bolt on the side of the timing cover I'll put a little bit of engine oil on that purple o-ring that you see there and that'll help ease it in this is going to be the crank sensor just gonna live over here on the passenger side and that hole and then of course we've got our temperature sensor up here on the top of our water pump if you remember from an earlier video that we did, the temperature sensor for the water and oil, at least on this particular Hemi, is the same part number. So we've got two of those. One will go there. If I remember correctly, it'll the other one will go here for the bigger fitting. And the smaller fitting that you see right here is where the pressure sensor will go. So we've got two of those. And of course, let me show you that pressure sensor. pressure sender or sensor or however you want to call it that's for oil pressure okay and with that being said um you said you're not missing much i'm i'm trying not to film just a little all, all it literally is is me just removing a sensor putting on some uh, thread sealant on each one of these that are going to go in uh and then tightening down accordingly uh the oil pressure sensor right here i'll go get the socket and show you that that takes a special sized socket you could probably just do it with a pair of vice grips if you needed to but you'll see all the all the sides on that and interesting enough i bought a socket for removing oil oil pressure sensors for a, a chevy lumina way 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 back in the day it's the same 
socket that fits this one as well so it's bonus other than th this one we won't be putting any thread sealing on because you can see it comes from the factory with sealant on it already I don't think our temperature sensors do let's take a look let's answer the question shall we actually they do they do have a little stripe on there that's kind of stingy I may add may I may add some more thread sealant out of that tube that you saw earlier just to kind of help that along. But let me go get that socket and I'll show that to you. And then we'll take a break and I'll go ahead and get these sensors installed and I'll, I'll bring it back. Now I've got to find it. Uh, give me one moment. I got a drawer of special specialty sockets here somewhere. It's moved. One minute. And welcome back. So there we go. That's it right there. Big old behemoth of a socket. It looks like this is an inch and an eighth. If I'm seeing that correctly. Any auto parts store, at least anyone here in the States, should have this on the shelf. Like I said, it seems to be pretty universal uh, as far as, you know, what it's being used for. Uh, there it is. Misplaced it there for a second. So you can see you got a pretty good diameter there. But you can see how that fits down in there and gives you the ability to remove and extract it. Like I said, it's kind of one of those, you know, special use, only used for one thing items, but... When you need it, it's convenient to have it. So with that being said, I'm going to get to work on getting these sensors installed, and then I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So just to show you, water temp, cam, sensor, oil pressure, oil temperature, and crank. Right there in the corner. So I just want to show this to you. This was the old factory, the original water temp sensor. Interesting enough, you can see that one's all plastic. And the newer one, the base is now metal because it's, uh, again, it came up as the same part number for the oil temperature. So kind of cool. At least we can, hopefully, if that, uh, if that is correct and that works, then that'll serve as an upgrade. So the DEX piece that looks like we can take care of is that we can uh, work on getting our valve covers on and, and our spark plugs in. And then once we have the spark plugs and valve covers, then we can uh, work on getting the coil packs installed. And it's relatively straightforward. Again, a lot of this I haven't been showing you turn by, you know, turn by turn wrench because this items I've shown before and I'm, I'm trying to Provide as much detail, but also summarize where I can so it doesn't, you know, end up being a too long of a video anyway. Okay, so with that being said, I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go get the um, spark plugs. We'll go ahead and get those installed uh, into their bores. And once again, just to show you what we're what we're using here, I showed these on a on a parts video earlier. We're going to go back to these. Going to go back to Laser Iridium Premiums. These ones, uh, these, I should say these, that's good English, there we go, these spark plugs, uh, according to NGK and as well as Rock Auto. Rock Auto says they're an OEM preferred for a replacement, and the laser iridiums that you see here, uh, supposedly these have a longer shelf life uh, than the iridium IXs. So we're going to go with those, and of course you saw it earlier, and we're going to go with eight new coil packs, and we're going to keep uh, keep picking away at this, I guess. And I'm going to get, like I said, I'm going to get these spark plugs in, we'll get the valve covers on, and then I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So we got our spark plugs in, we've got them tightened down. You can see we went ahead and put the valve covers on as well. We, before we put the valve cover on, we just took our oiling can and sprayed a liberal, liberal amount of oil uh, on the rocker arms and all the moving components underneath. Again, just want to give it some extra help uh, for that initial startup. In case you're curious, that's your tightening pattern for your valve cover. 
according to this it says 70 inch pounds which isn't a lot what these screws will do is that they will bottom out and they will stop tightening at one point because again there's it's a, it's a spacer with like a metal sleeve on it that stops you you know from going too terribly tight because it's, it's the seal uh, on these valve covers that produces the, the seal to keep them from leaking one thing I can say is though we had to break out the thread chaser and it is a number Oh, that is hard to read. Uh, anyway, metric thread chaser. I wish I could tell you the number, but I can't quite make out their, their stamping there. We had one that uh, wasn't just going in quite right, kept wanting to go in crooked, so we had to thread chase it, and we were able to recover it. So when you're putting these in, these should thread in pretty effortlessly. Be able to spin them in until the point that you need to tighten them. If you're putting these in and all of a sudden they tighten up and they tighten up early, then that's a warning. Back them off and you may need to just clean the threads out. But one more shot of that. And 70 inch pounds. Again, I didn't put a torque wrench on this. I just went down until they were, you know, hand snug and, and let it go at that. Uh, let's see. So we've got that done. We've got all that done. Well, I think we are to the point of being ready. Oh, I didn't put the coil uh, packs on. I figured I would save that for after the engine is in the vehicle because we still have to put the intake on and we have to do that piece in the vehicle as well. And yes, I will tape up these intake ports. I've I had them untaped because uh, before we put the valve covers on, I spun the crank a, a few more times as a, as a final test to make sure everything was still moving nice and fluid. Uh, so I will put some more uh, painter's tape on these and cover them up. So yeah, I figured when, we t when it's in the vehicle, since we got to go in the vehicle to make the electrical connections and put the intake back on, that I'll just go ahead and put the, uh, the coil packs on at that point. So that'll become an, an outside item. So yeah, at this point we are ready to put our hosting adapter on, get it off of our engine stand so we can gain access to the back here and put our splash plate back clean this area up in other words get all the over uh, spray paint over spray off of this mating surface uh, put the backing plate on it and then finally the uh, the flex plate so with that being said i'm going to go ahead and work on getting this off of this stand and i'll bring it back in a bit thank you much bye and welcome back so you can see it, we're off our engine stand. We're on our lift. So it gives us plenty of access that we need to finish cleaning up the, the back here where our dowel pins are to go in our transmission bell housing mating surface and work on getting the uh, flex plate and uh, uh, metal guard. The splash, I don't know if it's a splash plate or guard, I'm not sure what it's called, but there's a plate. It goes behind the flywheel that we need to put back on. So we're going to be using the ARP fasteners again uh, for the flex plate bolts. And what they want you to do is obviously use Loctite on them, which we will. And they want you to put um, underneath the head of each bolt, just like we did on the head bolts, they want you to put some of their assembly lube again, just to eliminate friction as you're turning that bolt. So you get a you get a more accurate torque reading is kind of what they're after. And they say to let's see, using alternating crisscross pattern, torque the bolts to 70 foot pounds. So they say 70 foot pounds for their bolts with some Loctite and some assembly lube. And I do believe that I have I'll have to find it, but I do have the sheet that shows the torque pattern of that flex plate and yes i know this is a mess but uh yeah what can i say we're in mid build here uh and i'll show you that torque pattern uh as as soon as as soon as i bring it back i'll show it to you but i'm going to work on getting this cleaned up now obviously we've got a suspended load here very very heavy load we're going to make sure that we don't reach underneath of it basically mind our p's and q's and you know keep it foremost in our in our thoughts that this is a quite heavy engine block now, although it's being supported by a relatively robust, you know, engine mount, engine hoist mount and chain. 
you know, just want to be careful of that. If it sounds like it's going to go at all, you know, obviously don't instinct would be as you try to reach, you know, and, and catch it, but, you know, just, just step out of the way and let it go. Uh, with that being said, uh, let me work on getting that back place, uh, that mating surface cleaned up and get the paint off of it. And I'm going to go uh, hunt down the plate, the flex plate, mounting bolts and so on and so forth. And we'll get to putting the, the last piece on that we can put on uh, prior to putting it back inside the truck. And with that being said, I'll bring you back in a bit. Thank you much. And welcome back. So just want to show you we're getting prepped here. Uh, so we got that surface all cleaned up. We went ahead and also took our thread chasers and we chased all the bell housing bolts that go into the block just to make sure they were nice and clean and clear. We also did the same thing with the bolt threads that uh, thread the uh, flex plate on. Again, just to remove any remnants of old Loctite, things of that nature, any kind of debris. Um, we also took... a little piece of red scotch bright and I've been doing this on anything that has a dowel pin to include the ones for the heads and the the uh, front timing cover and just kind of polishing these up a little bit just run them over a little bit just to kind of remove any potential rough edges because uh, the last thing we want is to try to you know slide this engine into place and you know there, there happen to be like a, a small rough edge or a burr or something on that and that keeps you from, you know, mating your transmission up. This uh, metal plate, you can see, it only, cut, it only fits on one way. It's got a folded edge that goes inward towards the motor. And you'll see where it rests on these two dowel pins. You'll know you got it in the right spot when your four bolt holes, or I should say uh, six bolt holes. This, this one's a through bolt. Uh, and to the thread in the box. Basically all your bolt holes will line up, you know, when you got it into the right spot. Uh, the flex plate itself, this particular flex plate goes on this way with this raised edge pointing out towards the transmission. Uh, I cheated a little bit and looked at the previous video and uh, just to kind of see how it was installed before we took it off and that's the way it was facing. Another way you can tell, at least on this one, and it may work for yours, is if you flip it around, you see that rust ring around the bolt holes? Kind of matches up with that, doesn't it? So that tells me that that surface, that crank surface, was, well, if I get my display back here, thank you. So that tells me that crank surface there was mated up against that surface. And plus the video confirms that it was facing this way with that center bulge out so that'll be that center bulge will be out towards the transmission so we're going to continue to work on this and i'll bring you back thank you much and welcome back so i just want to show you this real quick i ended up uh, getting out a dremel with a small sanding drum and going over the the very tapered outer edge here you can see these dowel pins are kind of shaped like the head of a bullet where they taper down and narrow and on both of them, what I could feel up here was a lip. So you had a little like ridge of metal that was kind of setting up just a hair taller than the barrel of this dowel pin. So what I ended up doing was just taking a Dremel and kind of going around this way and this edge and did it to them both. And then finally just polished it up with a piece of green scotch bright. Green scotch bright being a little bit more aggressive than the red stuff. And it turned out nice, so we shouldn't have any fitment issues out of out of these pins now. So I'll get. I just wanted to just wanted to show you what I was uh, kind of rambling on about there. I'll bring you back in a bit. Bye. And welcome back. So we did a, a triple check on our bolts to make sure they were they were torqued per spec. Uh, actually, did like I said, did three passes on it just to make sure. And uh, this is kind of by accident, but. The other thing I wanted to point out is that you'll notice for the torque converter bolts, three holes are round, and one is a little off round. Kind of has a little flat spot in here. What Chrysler wants you to do is start with that bolt, uh, which is convenient because it, you can kind of see where it lined itself up is inside this little divot area, this oil pan that we need in order to get it in there to put the torque converter bolts in. 
and uh, what that does is since this is uh, slightly out of round so if you use this bolt first this will center up the torque converter to the flex plate so that way when you get around to the other bolts they'll be lined up and good to go if you start with one of the round ones first because there's some slop here it it'll throw it off alignment and when you'll get you'll maybe get all three round ones in but you'll get down here to this one and it won't line up so it's actually convenient that that worked out that way now my understanding is is that the way um uh, I think I heard another gentleman in another video say that the way Chrysler does their, their torque uh, flex plates like this is that if number one is at top dead center or close, it'll actually end up down here where you can gain access to it. If, if I remember seeing the video correctly, which I thought was a pretty cool engineering ideal, is that because, uh, you know, typically I guess you're going to be dropping an engine in, you're going to be working on it, it's going to be set for, you know, top dead center, you know, ready to start. And uh, I guess by doing so, it gets that where you need it. Again, don't quote me on that. I believe that's what he said in the video. I just thought it was rather uh, coincidental that, you know, we're set within time and the right hole that we need is down here where we need it. Anyway, well, what can I say is, is that will end the long block build, part four, the long block series build in and of itself. Uh, we've done everything we can do at this point inside everything else has to be done outside uh because again we, we can't put the intake in obviously because you can see that's where the hoisting mechanism mounts and we're going to wait on our coil packs and everything else so the first order business is going to be getting this dropped in getting it lined up and get it mated back up with the bell housing and then we can start putting the rest of our bolts in now the good thing is, and I hope it's a good thing, remember when we took the engine out, we didn't take it loose from the center bolt of the motor mount. We just unbolted the motor mounts from the block. So we should be able to get pretty close of setting this on the normal, uh, on the bracket for the uh, motor mount. And that should put it in pretty good alignment in order to slide the engine in and get it to mate with the with the transmission anyway that that's the thought but i got some little bit more cleanup work here to do uh and uh i want th that is for a knock sensor uh basically all of these were exposed metal and i want to clean them back off to exposed metal because they've, they've gotten paint on them uh before it goes back into the truck and the reason for that is is that you know this is going to help provide this is the knock sensor. I don't think it uses the metal for ground, but it, it does have a metal piece that bolts to that. So it came off metal to metal and putting it on back on metal to metal. Same with the motor mounts and especially with the ground that's on the driver's side block. There's a ground point that comes down main negative cable from the uh, body harness. And we definitely want to make sure that one's clean and free of paint and has a good, solid, secure connection. But with that being said, like I said, this will end the long block build uh, series at this point. So it looks like it's going to be a four-parter, potentially five. Uh, I had to look and see what the run times are looking like right now, especially with all my rambling. But if you haven't subscribed, uh, please consider doing so. It, uh, it does help the channel out tremendously. If um, the more um, comments and subscribers we have the more we get noticed the more we get noticed the more comments and subscribers we can have again kind of going back to that uh self-feeding loop uh but it uh it really does help and the goal long term is to have the channel aid in doing projects like this so that we can do more uh than what we're doing now but with that i thank you and uh, like I said, I'll cut the video at this point. And the next one that you see in the series is going to be us putting this engine back in that truck. But uh, I, I thank you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.